In this tutorial, we're going to look at primary text frames, and this is uh, what we want to look at when you are creating a large book or something uh, significantly decent in terms of the copy, the type that you're going to receive, that you need to flow it out in your pages. And depending on the number of pages you have, uh, potentially if it's for a book or a magazine or, or anything like this, we want to make sure that we have that copy and that it can flow without us having to do it manually. Uh, InDesign will do it for us automatically. So let's take a quick look at that. We're going to set up a new file. This is where we're going to show you two different ways to do it. Uh, both ways are fine, but you might prefer one over the other. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go to File and New and Document. And here I'm just going to click on a simple 8.5 by 11. Let's assume that this file is 8.5 by 11. It doesn't matter what size it is because you can change any way you want. It actually works that way. But what I want to make sure is I have facing pages on, as most obviously books or magazines will be facing pages, but I'm also going to click on primary text frame. And let's see what that does. I'm going to do one version with clicking on primary text frame and one without. So I'm just going to say create. Now we know that obviously setting up our margins properly in our bleed, we should do that depending on the specs of this book or magazine, or whatever the flow might be, let's just create it. So there I have my bleed, I have my margin, and that's all well and good. But something else happened here. Before I did anything, just because I clicked on primary text frame, I already have a text frame. It's a very large text frame, that's fine. And I have this little icon here. The story is from the master's primary text flow. So let's go to the master and see what's going on in the master. So clicking on the primary text frame, I obviously have my two facing pages. What it did was it created two large text frames that fill the margin. If I change the margin, it would have filled the margin specifically when I created my new, do new document. And I have this icon that says, this story is the master's primary text flow. Click to disable the primary text flow. So if I want to get rid of it, I can click on it. But right now, I want to keep it. And it's a very simple thing to use. But normally what would happen, I'm going to click back on my live page here, number one. I have this selected, but I don't really need to do anything with it. What I do need to do is bring in my copy. So what I did, I just got some lorem ipsum from an outside file. I saved it as a text edit document, RTF, and I'm just going to bring that in. How do we bring things in? We go to import them. So we're going to go to file and import. Uh, and that's usually, uh, sorry, place, command D. So I'm just going to click on my file here, command D, my text frame, and click on command D, and click on this content that I have. Now, if I do to show more options, I could obviously look at a bunch of different options here that you will need to look at when you're going through some very specific things. If you have paragraph styles set up and character styles, but right now we're just learning how to bring this copy in, especially if I have a lot of it. This right now, the long ipsum I have is not a lot. I'm just going to press OK. Now watch what happens. I just, it's in this, but look what happened. InDesign reflowed the content to fit more pages. Look at that. Beautiful. So now that content that I had, which was obviously more than one page, is now reflowable to many pages. Look at that. And this it shows me exactly what I have here. But there's more that we could do. Let's first look at something here. Number one, it's already a style that's set up. The common style that I have on mine is times, regular, 12, 14. So there's a particular size. But if I, once again, if I click on it all, Command A, it selects all of it. So what I should do from here is create a paragraph style and make sure that it's set up to that style, connect it properly, and then it flows that way. So that is one great way to bring in the content and play around with it. Now, if I go back to my master page, watch what happens to in my page panel when I start to move these around. But I'm going to move it around to a grid. So let me set up a grid first. So I'm going to go on A master. I'm going to go to layout. And make sure you're on your master page when you do this. Go to your margins and columns. And I'm just going to add a two-column guide. I'm going to keep my margins the same just for the sake of this video. And there I have my video. Now what? watch what happens when I have my grid. I'm going to move over my text frame. And watch what happens. I'm going to move it over just to one side of that column. Look what happened here. It took those left-hand side pages and only gave it one column, which obviously stretched out the pages. Now I have seven pages. Now let me do the same to this side. I'm going to bring it over to this side, to that grid, that column, and now look what happens there. It moves it down further and further and further. So now I have more pages, but I don't necessarily need to do that. But let's look at something else here. I'm going to go to View, and this is an extra really good thing to have. View Extra Show Text Threads. This shows where the actual output goes to the next import, and this is usually helpful when you have a lot going on. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this and bring this here. Done. Now I have nothing on my right-hand side pages, but everything on my left-hand side pages. Obviously, my text frames are here and nothing here. Now. Well, let's pretend I wanted to set up, well, you know what, I want two columns here, but I also want two columns here. Well, there's usually a bit of an issue that might happen. What I'll do is I'll create another text frame. 
I'll set that up, and what I'll do is I'll just, because these are already text frames that are uh, going to be my primary flow, I'm just going to click on this out port and click onto this import. And it shows that it is connected. This story, click to disable it. I'm going to do the same thing. Actually, no, I'm just going to duplicate this one and do the same thing. Click on my out port, click on the import, there it is. But obviously, mm, it's not working. It's not letting me bring over that reflowable content into my right-hand side pages. Now, that just might be an issue with InDesign, which is totally fine, but there's still a way to do it, not a problem. I'm just gonna delete those last two I made. I'm gonna take the one I had and bring it over, and I still have those two frames. Now, if you watch the video on text frame options or are familiar with text frame options, this is not a big issue for us. Because what happened here, now we could also see that now when I expanded my two text frames, those extra pages are still there that were a part of my other reflowable text when I kept on shrinking the text frames, and that's okay, we can get rid of those, not a big deal. But what I wanna do here is I still wanna create that two column guide on both pages and make sure that the text reflows on both pages, left hand side and right hand side. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use my text frame options. I'm gonna select both text frames, Command B, or right click, text frame options, or object, text frame options. Okay, click on that. I'm just gonna say I want two columns and okay and there I go so now I have a two column structure inside you can't really see it here obviously but on here in my actual pages yes there is a two column structure and look at my thread and how it works that output to the import outboard to import and it keeps on going and so on and obviously these ones are still connected so if I, want, if I want to add more content I could add more and it would just keep on adding it more and more and more. And I have now a larger book, depending on if the publisher, editor, or the, the person who wrote the copy of the story has more content to give me, I could just keep reflowing and reflowing and reflowing, not a big issue. So a great way to take a large, a large amount of type and reflow it very quickly into InDesign. Now I'm gonna show you a different way to do that. I'm just gonna get rid of this one and I'm gonna create a new document, but this time, I'm not going to use the, the primary text frame clicked on here. I'm going to shut it off and create my own. So I'm going to go back to inches, make sure it's 8 9 by 11, click off of primary text frame, but still make sure my facing pages are on, create. So here's my, my normal page, as if nothing, there's no frame that was already put in there, not a problem. I'm going to go to my master page, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a grid automatically. My, my master page is selected. I'm going to go to layout, margins, and columns, and I'm going to click on a two column guide. Once again, I could play around with my margins. If you know, let me just show you, just to be on the safe side, uh, that yes, we can play with them, and uh, it will work either way. It doesn't really matter. So here I have it set up, and I'm just going to make, click on my text frame. I'm going to make, click and drag a quick frame. And keep in mind, remember, when something is set up on, in your master pages, it usually has a very uh, small dotted line as opposed to a solid line. That means something is set up in your master page. Just to keep that in mind, if you ever forget, oh, I'm on my master page, but I should be on my, I like to call them live pages, then obviously you're not going to have that structure there. Uh, you're going to have solid lines. But either way, here's my master page. I'm back at my master page. I'm going to set out this, and look what happens here. This icon, just like before, is still there. Click to make this story the master's primary text flow. So now I could make it the primary text flow here without having had done it at the initial setup of the document. So now what I can do, I can click and drag, and click and drag, hold on Option and Shift, hold on Option and Shift, and now I have four identical boxes. Now they are not linked, and we see that. We have our guide on where it shows the text threads. So no text threads. Outport, click on it, click on the import. Outport, click on the text frame you want it to go to. Outport, click on the text frame you want it to go to. There I am, perfect. Done. Now what I can do, click on my main page, and now with the exact same placement, file place, I'm gonna do the same thing. Now I can actually select the box here. It's on the master page, it's not, it's not clickable, it's not selectable, but that's okay. Command D, and I'm gonna choose that same content, I'm gonna shut off the import options, just say open. Now look what happens. As I hover over, where the text frame should be, something different happens with my icon. If I leave it here, nothing happens. I just brought in my text and it puts it into its own text frame and I can do whatever I want with that text frame. I'm going to, this time, hover over and see how that, that icon changes, the cursor changes. I'm just gonna click and leave it alone. Watch what happens.
it flows it perfectly using those text frames I already set up in the master page and that's another way on how to do it. Now, if I were to, let's pretend, set these up first and not set these ones up and then try to make my text frames move into these two areas, it wouldn't work. So my idea, the, the best case scenario to work with this is to set up the way you want your grid to work first and then import the text. If you have to play it around with it after, that's not a problem. If I want to take this, these frames and minimize uh, the height of them, bring it down a little bit, maybe I change up my margin, look what happens. Obviously, I can now, it's going to reflow to make even more pages. And now a few more pages were added because the content is getting shrunk inside these text frames, so it needs to make more space for more pages. Very simple, not a big deal. But let me undo this just a little bit. I want to go back and show you something else. Now, I have my content ready. Again, Command-D, it's like nothing ever happened. Now, if I hold down Option, another little icon changes. This is a reflow, but it's going to ask me first, okay, you put it in here, but where do you want it to go next? So the link option shows up there to link it to the next text frame. And now, once again, it's just going to flow to the next pages. Very, very simple. Another way that this might occur is if I bring in my text again, but this time I hold down Shift. Now Shift does something a little bit different, a little bit weird. I don't know exactly why it does it, but maybe it serves a particular purpose. I'm just gonna click on this text frame that we can't see, but we know it's there. Hold down uh, Shift and click, and now what it does, it actually reflows it. Oh, because I actually set it up uh, the proper way it worked. But usually what it does, it flows it on just the left-hand side only, but this one worked out because you know what? I did do it properly. I set it up uh, initially this way and it did work out. So holding down uh, either one will actually work out for you. So holding down uh, nothing, clicking works. Holding down option, clicking, and then connecting to the next one will also work. And also holding down uh, shift and clicking will also lay down all the proper content inside your pages. So once again, it's very good to set up the way you want things to be first of your master pages. Set up your columns, set up your text frames, set up the flow of how your text frames are going to work, and then from there you can play around with them after. Now that is primary text frames or the primary flow, and if at any point I wanted to get rid of them, I wanted to shut them off, I could shut them off right here. But either way, this is how uh, these work, primary text frames.